Hey everybody, it is May 20th. Can you believe that? I'm here at Cable. Uh, temperature's gone up to about 45 degrees. It was about 40 when I got up here this morning. It hasn't rained or anything, but it did snow last night up in the higher elevations. But anyway, that's all beside the point. The reason I'm here today at Cable is I have some testing to do with the switch, my monthly test, and I thought I would take this opportunity to uh, go over how a power switch machine works uh, as part of my how things work in the signal department. Uh, we have hand throw switches and we have power switches. And this is a power switch machine right behind me there over my shoulder. That is a union switch and signal M23A dual control power switch machine. You saw us change one of those up at Rowan about a month or so ago. I posted that video. I'll link that in this in the uh, description. But anyway, uh, let's get into how a switch machine works. Okay, well, we will start with the uh, basics, uh, the mechanical end of things. Uh, this, as I said, is a power switch machine. That lever right there where it says motor means that right now this is in motor control which means that it is being operated remotely the wires tie into that junction box and they go underground over to that house I can go in there and uh, take this location into local control and I can throw the switch I'll go in there in a little while I'll show you how that works but you can throw the switch from in there or when it's in remote the dispatcher has control of it and they operate the switch uh, based on where they want to put trains, what track they want to run them up. This is where double track starts. Uh, that is looking back down towards Bakersfield. And that is up towards Diatrophy. Uh, track on the left is the number two track. Track on the right is the number one track. Um, see these rods that are connected? Here. This is called the front rod right here and it is hooked to this the big fat rod here with the big nuts on it are the lock rods those are what lock the machine in place mechanically once this machine is locked mechanically it it cannot be it cannot move it's a big solid ball show you that the other rod the skinnier rod next to it hooked there is the point detector rod and the point detector rod is just that. It detects the position of the switch points. This is the uh, normal switch point. And this is the reverse switch point. This switch is normally lined for the number two track. And this is the basket rod. And what it does, it goes and it connects to the actual gearbox of the machine when the gears rotate that push the switch one way or the other that basket is adjustable and the tighter you get it the tighter the switch point is and it is used to keep the switch point nice and firm we actually have a test called a 334 where we stick a pry bar in between that gap there by the detector rod and try to pry the switch open. You shouldn't be able to pry that switch open any more than about a sixteenth of an inch. I just checked these ones, they won't pry open at all. That's okay. All right, let's go take a look at the machine. Okay, we are now inside the M23 power switch machine. This is the contact assembly that controls the movement of the switch and repeats the position of the switch point, normal or reverse. Right now, this switch is thrown in the reverse position and this crank assembly right here that's what that's called is down against the uh, point detector rod which is this rod right here and that runs out connects to the switch point and follows the movement of the point that's why that's called the point detector and right now it's in the reverse position these are the normal contacts right here for the normal indication these are reverse contacts you can see that these contacts I don't know if you can see it or not but they are down against the uh, contact so it makes a 
circuit through there and that tells the control apparatus in that house that this switch is reversed. The uh, set of contacts over here, the normal, they are up and this one is shunted against the bar so there is no way that you can get any continuity through that set of contacts and that keeps the normal switch repeater in the house down. These contacts here on the outside are motor contacts. Right now this contact is open. This is the normal contact here. If they were to apply power to this, the dispatcher wanted to throw the switch. And if I wanted to go into the house and take that into local control and throw it from in there, these contacts here would uh, apply power to the motor. Back here, the motor would start rotating. It would start turning these, see the reduction gears there? And you see the gears that are actually there that actually throw the switch. And there's the rod there that's connected out to the switch points. And then this is, you can take this, if you want to take this where it says motor there, you could take this, throw it over there in the hand. That would give you control of it out here. And you could use this lever to throw the switch manually. And any time you rotate the switch with the motor or hand throw, it rotates this cam, moves the point detector, and these contacts follow those movements. So anyway, that is the inner workings of an M23 power switch machine. These are uh, 20 volt DC motors and they're thrown by uh, just reversing the polarity like any other electric motor. This right here is the clutch and the way that works you tighten the clutch and that allows the gears to turn. If the clutch tightened enough it'll just slip. Uh, they will generally throw the switch but they won't stop but they won't stop uh, trying to throw if the clutch is too loose. It'll just continue to turn and we have a circuit in the house, uh, an overload circuit, and once that has run a specific amount of time, if the motor hasn't stopped working within that time and the switch hasn't locked up, the overload will throw and it'll turn the power of the motor off. And uh, the same thing if the clutch is too tight and the motor won't throw, it'll do the same thing. If the uh, time runs and the switch hasn't completed its throw yet it'll do the same thing it'll shut the power of the motor off or call us we'll come out here and either tighten the clutch or loosen the clutch but generally once you adjust those when the switch is installed you don't generally ever have to mess with it again unless for some reason uh, oil contaminates the clutch plates inside this housing so there you have it m23 those wires go into this junction box here and from there to the house. And that is how this all works. All right. Okay, and as you may remember from the uh, segment that I did, the original segment on how signals are controlled and switches are controlled much the same way. Uh, this is the micro lock control box. These are the cards that control everything. I'll link that video to this one, so I don't have to go over all that again. Uh, but the switch control, we can take this into local. And this is the light that's telling us it is in normal position. And we will reverse the switch. As long as that reverse or normal light is blinking, it means the switch is not locked. All right, it is now locked up reverse. You can see the light is solid. There's a light here that says the switch is locked, but <coughs> For whatever reason, most locations, that light doesn't work. So we'll normal the switch. This is pretty much the same thing the dispatcher has. It's <clears throat> Theirs is actually all computer control, but they have a board that looks essentially like that with all these lights uh, signifying the 
facing signal, the trailing signal, tell whether they're at stop or whether they're clear, and the uh, track the track indication lights in the uh, OS and on the approach tracks. Okay, we're locked up normal. We'll give this back to the uh, dispatcher. One of the things that some people do sometimes, and I've done it quite a few times myself, to come here and do some testing. We'll take this into local control and throw the switch or do whatever we're going to do here, and then we leave and give our tracking time back. And dispatcher calls us and says, hey, I don't have any control over that uh, location. I have to come back here and put this back in remote. But anyway, that is how you operate the switch from the house remotely. And this is how the dispatcher, their input comes into the unit through the radio and goes round and round and round and comes out out there. All right. I even uh, make little notes to myself. So this is on the door of the house to remember to restore the AC power when I test the standby power here and to restore the remote when I'm testing the switch because I have forgotten plenty of times to do that and that does not make people happy. Well, we're done here at Cable. I hope you enjoyed the little piece on how power switch machine works. Uh, I didn't get into all the minutia of adjustments and all the little thises and that's because that really doesn't matter. I think most of you care about that anyway. But uh, I think it's interesting how our stuff works. The prime reason for all these things that I'm going to go over, crossing, switches, signals, everything, is all safety. It's all about safety. It starts with public safety. Uh, we don't want trains derailing. We don't want them hitting cars. We don't, want, we don't want people getting hurt in the public sector or here. It's, uh, it's about the safety of the trainmen. The train moves. We want the switches to be shut and locked when they're supposed to be. We want to make sure that uh, they can't open in the event of some weird thing happening. <clears throat> the motto in the signal department, as far as I'm concerned, is what if. Oh, I hate it when I hear people say, oh, what are the chances of that? If there's one chance in a billion, we need to make sure that we cover that. And uh, that's why we do all this testing. Uh, that's why we have uh, uh, government mandates and guidelines on how this stuff is tested and how it works. And we have regular inspections. Government inspectors come out here and look at this stuff with us. And uh, over the years, it seems like a pain, but you know, I'm glad, I'm glad somebody's doing it. I'm glad somebody cares. Uh, so anyway, as always, safety first and the rest will fall into place. Hey, we'll see y'all later.